Number 76. Water gas, a mixture of H2 and CO, is an important industrial fuel produced by the reaction of steam with red hot coke, essentially pure carbon. And then they give us this formula, which I rewrote down here. So we have pure carbon solid plus H2O gas yields CO gas plus H2 gas. So now here's letter A out of this whole set of questions. It says, assuming that coke has the same enthalpy of formation of graphite, calculate the delta H for this reaction. Okay, so enthalpy of formation of graphite. Graphite is the, the, the simplest form of carbon. That's pure carbon, graphite. And that delta H value, since it's in its standard form on Earth, it is zero kilojoules per mole. There was no heat that was necessary to create this carbon, mainly because there are no bonds in carbon. So, yeah. Now, for the other numbers, we had to go find them on the delta H chart, right? Usually it's in the back of the textbook. Usually it's like an appendix value. So that's how we're going to find the delta H for this reaction. I see that there was like a little notch here. The notch means standard, so standard numbers in the back of the book. So I just went and got them for you guys, okay? Just be careful, like when you're searching for H2O, there's H2O gas and there's H2O liquid. So just be careful that you're writing down the right numbers, okay? So now, how do I find a delta H for a reaction? We've been doing this, right? It's this formula. Products minus reactants, right? The delta H for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. We need to get one number for the left and one number for the right-hand side. Well, how am I going to do that? The first thing is, since I don't see coefficients for any of these, I'm just going to pause and say, is this equation even balanced? But as I look through it, yeah, it is balanced. So that was, I guess, just a coincidence, right? So here we go. We need to now basically get the numbers, which we did, and we're now going to multiply the numbers that we had by how many of them in the balanced equation. But in this case, since they're all ones, right? One C, one H2O, one CO, and one H2, I just multiply each number by one. Essentially, you're not gonna do anything, but I just wanna show you in theory. And then we need to sum them up. So, Literally, it's carbon plus hydrogen. There's literally a plus sign here. So I got to plus these. Carbon monoxide, CO, plus H2. Literally, there's a plus. So I'm going to plus. So let's get it. So this would just be negative 241.82. And this side would be negative 110.52. Now I'm ready to use my equation. Delta H for the entire reaction is products minus reactants. So negative 110.52 minus negative 241.82, and then keep change, change, minusing by a negative. I mean, you could just do it as a plus a positive if that helps you in the calculator. But either way, we will arrive at our destination as if we're going on vacation. Hey. Right, but instead we're doing instead we're doing chem. So much more fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm adding these up. Negative one ten point five two plus two forty one point eight two. And I get one thirty one point three. And now the units of delta H is always kilojoules per mole, especially if you're using the um the tables and you're done. So what's the delta H? Slightly endothermic, because it's a positive number. That means that the, the, um, uh, this reaction is going to hold in energy. It's not going to release any, and it's going to hold in. It's going to absorb 131.3 kilojoules per one mole. So yeah, that's it guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for that. And I will see you all in future lessons. All right, take care. Bye-bye.